I'll recap the game, obviously. Everything I said uh, it was a Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. Saturday night, it, it, it stayed true to form after watching the tape. Uh, there's still a lot of things we have to do to improve, uh, but it's always good to coach players after you've won a game, trying to improve things rather than the other side of it. So I think they, they, they're well informed of uh, who we're playing this week. Uh, when you think about Michigan State, um, it's, it's one of those established programs. Coach D'Antonio has done a fabulous job. It's, it's one of the better college teams in the country every year. They seem to find their ways numerous years of being in the top 20 uh, ranked in college football. Uh, they have a certain DNA. Uh, it goes back to when Coach Perlis was there. And I can remember being a scout uh, in 1990. We drafted Percy Snow, first round linebacker out of Michigan State. And uh, just tough, fundamentally football, uh, sound football team. Um, they find themselves very comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Uh, last week was probably an uncomfortable situation for them at home, uh, playing a, a really game Utah State team that, that did a lot of good things uh, to, to put some points on the board. But here again, they're a team that doesn't panic, um, played well, made the plays to win a football game. And that's the critical part. Um, they travel well. Generally, uh, a good run offense and, and good defense travels well. It, go, it walks into any, any stadium on the road and can play. And so this is why they've been very consistent. Um, Coach has done a fantastic job there for 12 years. Uh, I met him quite some years back. And um, one of the better college football coaches in the country. And uh, their team takes on the personality of their coach. They're very tough. They're disciplined. Uh, don't make a lot of mistakes. Um, and they're an experienced group on defense. I guess the quarterback was local, a local kid, um, athletic, can make some plays outside the pocket, tough guy. So they're, they're the typical, you know, when you think that conference, they, they meet the bill um, of, of, a con of a team that plays in a tough physical conference. I thought about what I talked about that week. The thing that concerns you about opening days is what? Missed tackles. A lot of missed tackles. Great run by him, missed tackles. And, you know, that's, that doesn't surprise me with Nikhil, though. All, all the work that, that he puts in after practice and all the things he does in the weight room when no one's looking, I mean, he is a, he is a guy that is uh, really, it's important to him to, to play well. Uh, he loves the competition. Loves the spotlight, loves the lights. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't run to the shade. He wants, to, he wants the light on him. He likes to perform in, in, in big time situations. Uh, the run was surprising. You know, we, at the end of the, yesterday when we brought the team in, you know, the play of the day. You know, we always, on Mondays you win a game, you know, you bring the team back and there's always a play of the day. And I showed that and everybody was excited, you know, and then I said, not so fast. The interception by our defensive lineman was the play of the day. That was a pretty good run, too. But he doesn't get enough credit, so I had to give him some love. <laughs> so the kid was up there going, shaking his head. No, coach, I see you. And the kid listened to play today, not yours. It was, we expect you to do that. But a defensive lineman dropping into the slant zone and intercepting and running for a touchdown is pretty impressive. Big fellow like that. Uh, it's rare. Um, but you know, here again, yeah, he's a talented player. Um, and um, I saw that when he was in high school, when I had him in the Under Armour game. You know, he, he was, he's different, and you can tell. He's a guy that's going to have an opportunity to, to, to extend his career beyond college. And I think he's working at it. He understands the importance of it. Uh, I think he wants to play at the next level, and he will. Um, but right now, I think it's it's, it's it's thing that when we watch, I, I, you know, when you watch other players, sometimes you get admired with other guys. And they have a similar receiver, Davis, uh, number 18. Big, strong, physical guy. Similar dimensions, about 6'4", uh, about 218, somewhere right around there. Same kind of traits. Can catch it. Strong hands, 50-50 balls. He can jump up and catch it. So um, it'll, be, it'll be kind of fun w watching both of them. Hopefully we can slow their guy down. But he, he's a good player. Well, I think he'll stay, he'll stay in the framework of the offense. And um, one thing they do is they, they pound the ball now. They're, they're a physical run team. They've got two really good backs that, that can uh, – they run better after contact, to be quite honest. And he's a quarterback that uh, 
he's in full control of the offense, uh, can make some plays with his legs now. I mean, he'll, he'll get out uh, away from it and, and make plays. And I think, um, you know, coming home is always exciting for you. Uh, but, but he's playing on a team where, um, you know, he has some complimentary players, uh, the way they play offense. He doesn't have to put it all on him. Uh, you know, he can give it to the runner. He's got some receivers that make some plays. So I, I think he's, he's comfortable with who he is. Uh, you know, he's played in enough football games now. Coming home can be a burden to a young guy sometimes because of all the requests and all the you guys will want to talk to him all week, and he's got to deal with that. But he's, you know, like I said, when this, this team is a team that is used to the spotlight, that's their normal, that's normal to them, okay? So when you're the quarterback and you're on, in a winning program, that comes along with that. And uh, I think that's why they're so successful. They, they have an air about their self that um, when they get off the bus, regardless of at home or on the road, there's a standard they're going to play to, and they've done it. Well, did a great job on the perimeter tackling, uh, and that's critical. Um, you know, college football is about the perimeter game. Now, these guys are not so much on the perimeter. They like to run it up inside, you know, and, and beat you up a little bit. But they've got, but they've got receivers that are really talented, um, that can catch the ball, and they're hard to tackle. We're going to have to tackle really well, especially on the perimeter when they get it out there. These guys are big guys. They're not little guys. They're big, powerful receivers. So. We're going to have to tackle really well. And it's good when your corners will tackle. I always tell corners, if you don't tackle, it's hard to play for me. Yeah, you got to be able to tackle. Don't tell me about you just being a cover guy. you got to tackle. You know, they, they ask you to tackle, too. So in college football, and that's what gets you beat when you don't tackle on the perimeter because that's where the big plays are. The way, way most people play. Now, they, they're a little bit more traditional, but they can, they can open it up and throw it at you. You know, they play with some tight ends, and they create a couple of different formations. But uh, you got to be able to tackle outside. I think JJ, JJ will be back this week. I, I, I don't know where, where Zach's at yet. I think he's coming along. You know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, no, won't be back. Coach's decision. Well, if he practices, he's going to play. When you don't practice, you don't play for me. If you practice, you get an opportunity to play. That's how it works. Well, we, we, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I've always lived my life this way. Uh, when you had a little success in your life, you stay humble, but be hungry. You know, that's kind of that's my kind of my motto. Those are my my walking, my walking orders. You know, just stay humble and, and be hungry. Just that's what you got to do. And it's a mindset. You know, you you can't live off what you did in the past, or you stay the same. Somebody passes you up. You know, how, how much? You know, success is a success can be a disease if you allow it. You know, it can overtake you, and before you know it, you're thinking you've arrived, and you really haven't. You've never arrived. You know, there's always something else you want. And, and, and if you love the feeling of success, well, what does it take to have some more success? And I think successful teams understand that. We won a football game, and that's, that's fantastic. But now we've we got to try to win another one against a really, really good football team. I mean, so um, this will be a good test for us. Uh, they, they, they understand who they are. They play complementary football. Um, their running game, time of possession, allows their defense to not play a lot of snaps. Um, now, Utah, hit a, Utah State hit a couple plays on them, couldn't run the ball, couldn't run the ball past the desk for the most part. Um, you know, they're big and physical, uh, linebackers inside, good front. Uh, secondary tackles, excellent for the most part. So, you know, they, they don't do a lot. They'll bring pressure, um, but they, they can go with a four-man rush. They have a couple coverage schemes they like playing. It's, you know, they're, they're a team that understands who they are. So they don't, they don't worry themselves about who you are. And I think good teams understand that. You know, teams that have success, they just, 
they don't worry about the opponent. It's this is who we are. We're going to play this type of defense. On offense, this is what we're going to do. And generally, when you build your DNA that way, you're able to recruit players like that. And it just kind of works. You know, when you've been there 12 years, you kind of establish something of who you are. And, and they play in a conference where there's different teams in that conference, but they're Michigan State. They have a brand of how they're going to play, and they're not going to change that. And that's why they're so consistent um, with, with, with winning a lot of games. He did fairly well. You know, when you don't turn the ball over, now he, he wasn't asked to do a whole lot. I mean, he only threw it, what, 24 times or something like that. Um, you know, responded to when he got hit, uh, made a couple plays, made a, made a nice play on the, sc on the scramble where he rolled and threw the touchdown pass. Um, on, the fourth and f on the fourth and five, you know, he hit the fade ball, which was a really nice throw. So he made some good throws. There's probably a couple he wished he could take back. You know, he said, I may have had to set my feet. I uh, could have got, you know, better velocity on the football. But, you know, one thing about Manny, um, he, is, he is an established quarterback. He's had, he has a lot of experience. Um, a bad series of plays, a three and out. Most quarterbacks hate three and outs unless you score. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect him going into the next series. You know, it doesn't like, well, I got I to gotta do something now. He understands that this offense will give him an opportunity. Um, we're fortunate to have some skilled players that if they get the ball in your hand, um, when you've had a negative play, if you miss them, all of a sudden it becomes a positive play. You know, a three-yard play becomes an eight-yard play, and, and you're back ahead of the chains. You know, the thing we don't want to do is get behind the chains offensively because when you do that, then people have the ability to bring pressure, and that's what Michigan State does. They, they make you play behind the chains at times, and then uh, they come after you. I thought it was important, and it's going to be really important this week um, because you're going to have to match these guys' intensity at, at, at walk in the ball yard on offense, defense, and special teams. Um, I thought for the most part we tackled fairly well. Um, you know, and I think our D-line did a nice job of really establishing the line of scrimmage for us. Um, we created a lot of negative plays, uh, but we're really going to have to tackle. I mean, because they, they've got good runners that can break tackles, and as I talked about the receivers, they're good and strong and physical guys, so um, this will be a good test for our defense again this week. Well, I mean, the rotation, I mean, you know, a system that we have, and, and Danny's trying to get a lot of guys in there to play. We've got a young defense, as you guys know, so I, th I think he has a veteran presence uh, to himself. I mean, the guys respect him. And, he, you know, he's a, he's a good, he's a tough football player. I mean, this is, this is a game that he, he kind of he likes, you know, because it's a big physical team. He's a physical player. Um, he has some athleticism that you can't teach. It's just his gift. And so it'll, it'll, good, it'll be good to get him back playing. Yeah. Well, and, 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 they're, and then they're, well, and we're going to find out because now all of a sudden they're, they're playing against an experience, experienced football team well, with a lot of experienced players, you know, and it, and it showed up. I mean, they, when the game's tight, they don't panic. They just they keep their poise. They just figure out, well, we're going to be okay. We'll, we'll make a play. We're right where we're supposed to be. And uh, they were able to do it down the stretch. You know, you see it in college football. You see the teams with experience, the guys that played a lot. They, their demeanor doesn't change. You know, the, the moment doesn't doesn't overwhelm them. They just keep playing. They, they don't try to play out of, out of their skin. You know, some guys try to play out of their comfort zone, and that's when you mess up. You just got to be who you are and, and embrace the moment and just, just play. And uh, it takes care of itself. We ran it fairly well, uh, I thought. Uh, you know, we, we attempted more runs than passes. We said that going in that you know we would like to try to run the ball. I think uh, my rule is you throw to score and you run to win, and uh, we're able to do both. We threw it, and we scored when we threw it, and uh, we were able to run the ball. We didn't. We ran it in spurts. You know, as I said, we sputtered some offensively, and that's going to happen this week. By the way, against Michigan State, <laughs> I mean, what they're the seventh-ranked defense or something like that. So it's not like. You're going to just have your way with them because you're not. You're going to be a lot of bad plays, you know, and we got to realize that and we can't get flustered because this is who they are. You know, you just have to take opportunities 
you're not going to you're not going to be able to make errors or when you get a chance to make a play to not make it uh, you got to make the plays i mean you have to you know because they're not going to give you second and third chances so i think we got to be well aware of that Well, um, emotionally, you know, Michigan State had nine, and that's not them. I mean, opening day is hard in college football. It's harder than professional football because there's no practice games. I mean, the scrimmage, the spring scrimmage, that's, that's not a game. I mean, professional football, you play four games. <laughs> college football, the first one you play is live. It counts, and it happens. It just, it, I, look, I sat here and said it was going to happen. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a negative guy. I'm a positive guy, to be quite honest. But you just feel it's going to happen because they haven't been in that moment. There's a different anxiety when the lights come on, and you smell the popcorn and you see the people. It's different, and I say that as a player. And I always, I keep telling you guys, I, I look at things through the player's eyes. I played a long time, and as a veteran guy, you know, it's opening day. It was opening day. And it's like, here we go. And you don't know. You, you feel like you're comfortable, but you you, you got you to gotta play well uncomfortable. And sometimes it takes you a little while to do that as a football player, as, as an athlete, period. Now, they might not show it. It might not look like it. But we all got anxiety in our bellies. I don't care how many times. You, you look, I never missed a game. I never missed a start. And every time I walked out there, I felt the same thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm a veteran guy walking out there, and I'm going, oh, man. You just feel it, and, and it's a good feeling. It's, it's the best feeling you get in life because you, you're, 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 your tenors are up. It's like, oh, but then you got to find the pace of the game and just find out where your comfort zone is. And, you know, we, we made some, some, some boneheaded plays, and, uh, you know, and you got you, you to gotta alleviate it. You can't have 11 penalties in a game and expect to win. You're not going to have 11 penalties against these guys that win a football game. you got no shot. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, I was back in here, you know, I got home, I don't, I don't know, about 12.30. And before I went to bed, my daughters were up and we were talking, and my wife looked at me and she says, please tell me. I said, yeah, I ain't going to make it. She said, I know. So I was back in here around 4. You know, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep. I didn't, it, it took almost 30 minutes getting back to all the texts. I, I said, how do all these people know me? How did they get my number? People, how, it's amazing how people get my numbers. Like, how did this guy get my number? I haven't talked to the guy in two years. How does he know get my number? And so, you know, you, you try to, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, forthright. I mean, when people text me, I text them back. I mean, I, I'm not one of those guys wait three days. I kind of, so you got everything I'm pressing it, I'm doing, you know, I'm sad to hand, thank you, you know. I got half of the worldwide leader, you know. I'm like, Leave me alone now, you know, because they're up back there. And they kind of know I'm up because these guys get something at 4 o'clock every morning. So we just text it, you know, so. Yeah, but it was, it was fun. I heard from a lot of good friends, um, and it was nice. Uh, their encouragement, obviously. It's always nice to hear from friends you haven't heard from a long time, you know. So it was fun. Uh, now we got got a big-time football team coming in here now and uh, established program, and uh, I think it's good for all of us to play a game like this. Look, I, I can't say enough about our fans. I mean, the student body, that, that, that section that sits down here now, I'll tell you what, they were, they were all in now. They, they were good. They, they were really good. And I think our, our crowd, I know we're going to get expected a lot of folks in, in, the, in the stadium, and hopefully we can perform well for them. But um, it was fun going out there and just watching the students, you know, just participate in it. It's just that's what I love about college football. Uh, when I was doing SEC games uh, for a year at ESPN and, and going to the tailgates before the game, you know, and it's amazing. Just the, the, the atmosphere of college football. It's nothing like it. It's different. It's different than pro football. There's no doubt about it. And the, the young people that come into stadiums are excited. And we got a great fan base. We got a great student body here that really uh, follows sports here. That they're in. And I've, I've gone to a bunch of sporting events here. You guys know. You see me at softball games, swimming, I baseball. I go to all of them. Anything I can go to that's involved in sports here, I'm, I'm a fan. You know, I'm, I'm a fan. And I go and I watch the student body. I watch how they react. You know. And, I go to basketball games. It's fun to watch them, you know, because they, they come up with more clever things. It's like, how do they do that? Who thinks of stuff like this? You know, I mean, when I was that young, I never thought of stuff like that. It's like, how did they do that? How did they, you know, and, and they have skits and all that stuff. It's like, it's just fun to watch them. You know, it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's great.
Yeah, good stuff. You know, it, it was okay um, for the most part. There wasn't a lot of chaos because um, it can get chaotic on the sideline. And I think a lot of it has to do with these coaches are experienced. It was just a matter of the communication part. When we needed to talk to certain parties um, on the field, I was in direct communication with all the coordinators for the most part. Um, I stayed out of their way for the most part when they were getting involved in the calling of it. I'm generally a guy that steps in uh, when the offense is off and the defense is about to take the ball, I'm, I'm, then I, I'll talk to the offense and give them some ideas or suggestions, same way with the defense. Danny's on the field, so I can get to him uh, easy. Coach uh, Slocum is on the field. So but for the most part, you know, they needed to know how I was going to react, I, I think, on a game. You know, how the head coach, what is the head coach going to say? You know, every head coach is different. I, I hope I kept my composure good enough for them because that's – Whatever you saw this Saturday, that's kind of who I am all the time. I don't change a whole lot. It, you know, I'm a thinker. Uh, I watch. I listen to my eyes. I, when I see things go awry, I, I try to get to that unit and speak to them uh, in the course of the game when I get a moment. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I watch the game. I mean, I watch it. And I watch situations and I watch players. And there's certain demeanors of players. And I walk, when I watch them walk off the field, and I kind of know I need to talk to that one. You know, and I need to tell him this or whatever. And I, I just do it my own way. You know, I don't try to, you know, get any fanfare. I just find a way over there eventually. It's hard for me because there's so many players. You know, there's like 80 guys. I'm not used to all those guys. You know, it's like an I turn around and there's an army back here. Where are all these guys at? You know, and you try to find them and you shift your way through it. And um, I'm always trying to give them encouragement. You know, I, it just, you know that's what you do as, as a head coach. You got to give them hope. After every series, you give them hope. When things go good, there's not a lot to say when things – don't go the way you like. You try to get back to them or to that unit. When a unit does a good job of certain certain things, you you you, you tap them on the helmet, say, "Hey, man, you guys are doing a great job, whatever." And and that's what you try to do as a head coach. Yeah, it's with his pants and his, his knee, you know, his knees. You know, it, there's this rule that you got to cover your knees, and they were knee. His knees were covered, but the pad they thought it was too long, so we discussed that, and we finally came to an agreement that it was okay, and. You know, it's just, you just do a lot. I'm, tr I'm, like, I'm trying to figure out how to make a first down. I'm worried about knee pads <laughs> during the timeout, TV timeout. You know, it, it, I, that, that, like I said, there's, what, 20 timeouts or something like that in college football. I got to get used to that. I mean, that, that had to be the longest first quarter that I've ever been involved in in, in football history. I kept looking up there, and I'm going, the clock's wrong. I just kept saying, the clock is wrong. And finally, I asked somebody, I said, did they not change the quarter? <laughs> he said, no, coach is still first quarter. I said, it can't be. I said, we've been in this thing for 30 minutes now. And he said, no, coach. I said, no, that clock's wrong. I, I, I almost started arguing with the guy. I said, the clock's wrong. It's the second quarter. He said, no, coach, it's the first quarter. I asked, I asked the official. I said, is it still the first quarter? He said, yeah, coach. I said, is it still long? He looked at me and said, it is a long quarter, coach. I said, yeah, okay, I'm just checking. When, w w am I dreaming? Was it? Uh, okay. So I wasn't like deja vu. I was like out of my element. That's what I thought. I said, is it me? Or, I don't know. It's okay. Got through it. Got through it pretty good. Good. Yes, sir. Well, I, I think that we, we have a, a unit of players that have some unique talents. He was one. Um, I said uh, when we decided to offer him a scholarship, um, he was a little bit of an exception to the rule as far as his DNA at the position he played, because there's a certain height and weight, speed, FBI, intelligence, and all those things that go into how we recruit now. Uh, and if you look at his body type, it, it, it wouldn't fit the DNA. But there's always an exception to the rule. And we said that when we, when we decided to offer him a scholarship, and I'm so glad he took it, um, that um, he was going to be different. And I think you guys watched him. But when I watched him in JC, I went, OK. He said, Coach, he's a little dip. I said, I don't worry about DNA on this one. He said, he's a football player. He can help us. So, yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's got some talent. And um, I'm not surprised if you're asking that. No, I'm not surprised. The guy that was training him in the offseason, I went to school with the Cal. So um, he was keeping me abreast every week on how he was training and 
you know, where he was at. So when he got in here, I wouldn't. I think he surprised a lot of our guys, you know, because a lot of guys thought he was a freshman. You know, like a, you know, he came in in the offseason and, and he was running with the guys. And about the second day, they figured it out. They said, this guy here, man, he's a little bit different. And so, you know, he's, he's, earned, his, he's, earned, his, he's earned his way and through hard work. He's a hardworking guy. He really is. And, and he likes playing football. And I like guys that like playing football. He likes practicing football. You know, it's, he likes to watch guys like that. And, you know, and, and there's always this thing in life, you know, when you're not the biggest guy, you always feel like you've got to prove yourself. So he's always trying to prove himself. And I told him, hey, you don't have to prove yourself to me. I said, that, that needs to stop. I said, you're one of our guys. You're here for a reason, and you're a good football player. So I'm glad he's aboard. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Well, uh, Eno is, is, is quite the player, as you guys witnessed. Uh, he's tough. He can run inside, outside. He's good after contact. He has great balance. Uh, he understands blocking schemes. I mean, he, he sits in the classroom with those offensive linemen when the run game is being put in. He's, he's sitting in the front row. And he, he you know, he's, he really, it helps when you have a running back that knows how to press the hole because that helps the offensive line get to the second level because it brings the linebacker in the trash. And, and, you know, when you get the linebackers caught in the trash, then all of a sudden he can break away from that. Some running backs don't press, press the heel of the, of the offensive lineman when you're, when you're entering at the enter point, and, and that gives the linebacker the ability to scrape and go make plays. But he presses the hole, and he has a good enough vision and, and ability to escape it where he can hit a little crease and, and make a play. So. And he catches the ball well. He's, he's good in protection. And, you know, the complete running backs have to protect the quarterback as well. It's not just running and catching the ball. When they bring pressure, Michigan State will bring pressure. you got to pick up a linebacker. You know, and these, these linebackers here are big and physical guys. Like the kid for UTSA was a big, good linebacker, 55. He's a good player. And sometimes you got to block those guys. So uh, he does it all. He's a complete running back.